Representative Delosier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Secretary, uh, question uh, on, pre on early education. So um, one of the things we have, we have pre-K counts, we have early um, intervention, and we have Head Start, um, all kind of encompassing be before kindergarten here. Um, my one question that I noticed in the early childhood education part with pre-K counts, um, asking for an increase of $30 million or a 17% increase. Um, one of the things that I have in, in questions that I get within my district, because I have STARS um, entities within them. So why are only three and four eligible for state funding? Why are not one and two level STARS program? Because they all have to comply with state mandated requirements. As I get the notifications, if a daycare or anything like that is complicit or compliant with the requirements, so it's a celebration when they move up a STAR, but why are one and two not included in state funding? So the, the STARS um, aligned um, allocation is to ensure quali high quality. Right, absolutely, readiness the programs. standards. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And, and so that's why we incentivize it with the additional funding. Uh, by providing more funding, the, the higher up the STAR um, you know, the ladder you go. What, what I can share with you, in addition to now looking at the quality of the programs, STAR 3 and STAR 4 will now look a little more parallel as, the, as opposed to um, rungs on a ladder. Currently, STAR 3, as you know, is very operationally driven. STAR 4 is uh, more quality of an, an instruction driven. We're actually going to allow those allowances to kind of to, to be flipped on its side. So a high quality instructional program that doesn't meet the same operational lens can hit that STAR 3 rung um, sooner. Just for that part? So, so just for that part, just for three and four. And they would be entitled then to state funding appropriately? Uh, three and four, so if you have a high, so for example, yeah, so you may have a, a star two that's academically right. really well aligned, but they don't have, but they are not in, uh, don't have they some don't of have the a other CFO, criteria. Okay. Uh, and so they can't get that star three now, but what, what we're looking to do by running them parallel, high quality program that doesn't necessarily have that staff person in place can okay. hit the three run. Okay, um, and I have a number of questions, so I'm gonna tr try and rattle these off pretty quick. Um, if we have pre-K counts, we have Head Start, and we have early intervention, understanding that's the, the um, special ed for er, before, how much state dollars for those three entities, how much, how many state dollars go to pre-K education here in Pennsylvania? Sure, um, in 1819, uh, 541.5 million in state funding for early childhood. Um, and that does not include um, early intervention. Early intervention is uh, 275.5 million. And that's, f that's federal? Th that's our, or that's those our are state, our state dollars that you're saying? Dollars. Okay, sorry, state okay. Dollars. All right, and um, so $515 million goes to early education. Um, when we have the six, uh, the 4% increase, $11 million increase for early intervention services, where will that money go? So the early intervention services will go right to the early intervention programs. So all of the different programs. So, so to the different programs. Um, we have not changed the, the funding um, system to, to look at use and to look at allotment. That's something that the system itself, the partners within the system are looking at. Will that take into consideration that more students that are presenting with issues or, or services that are needed with um, dealing with that inter, inter, early intervention? And so, yes, it takes into account more students in service, and, and I think this is also a great opportunity to, to share. We also look at the spring update, you know, and uh, if there's, you know, a need to adjust, we, we work, um, you know, both with the administration to, you know, to adjust accordingly. Do we have a, a per cap, per student head cap, uh, for Head Start, do we have a per capita number that, per student, that it costs the state? That's what we're looking to work towards. Right now, it's still, has, as it historically has been, pots of funds right. that, that the, the providers um, receive. And, and we're looking towards working um, on, a, on a more uh, aligned system. In okay, and so with the $10 million increase for that, is that looking to expand the amount of students or to add dollars to the ones already being served? Um, is that for early intervention? Or I'm sorry, for um, the Head Start. Oh, for Head Start, all of that funding is looking um, is creating more slots for students. I also want to. Do you know how many that will be? Yep, I do. Okay. Uh, so four. But ten uh, million dollars so increase. Four thousand four hundred um, additional children to enroll in. in um, high I'm sorry, I didn't hear the number. Uh, so forty-four hundred total. Three, okay. Three thousand four hundred and sixty in pre-K and nine hundred and thirty in Head Start. Okay, and um, real quick, uh, also kind of switching a little bit of gears here. Uh, free and reduced uh, breakfast and lunch. Uh, do we know how many schools? Um, participate in that? 
Matt's, Matt's going to going to pull that that number up. Oh, for and me. what is the cost to Pennsylvania for that program? Oh, the cost for free and reduced lunch. I don't know. We have for, the state for share. Just, right, for the state just, share. Right, I recognize. Right. So for just lunch, well, I mean, we can get you that number because it's not just lunch. There are other programs that are funded through the school services line. Um, for example, breakfast, um, and then also um, uh, the child care and child food adult and child care food programs as well. Okay, and I'm just trying to get the numbers as to how many, so I have you know, a Title I school, but also the free and reduced lunch um, goes along with that, and one of my schools is entirely served uh, in that regard Community based on the poverty program. level. <laughs> so I'm just curious as to how many other schools in the state are in the same boat. <laughs> If you're talking about the community eligibility provision, there are 181 LEAs per, uh, participating in CEP, which captures 960 buildings and over 80% of the eligible sites in Pennsylvania. 960 buildings? Correct. So, Schools. okay, because I, okay. I'll have to do the math then because I know how many buildings are in my school district. So, yeah, yeah that, I, think, that's, oh, I think we track it vis a vis buildings because some schools are in more than one building. So, so okay. the 906, it may be a few smaller if we could do by Is there a list school. that possibly says what school district those are in? I think we can track uh, that yes, down. <laughs> to figure out where they are in the state. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.